Brandon, how exciting is it to not be preparing to fight Devison Figueroa? <laughs> Let's go, man. I always, I always answer the same, and I mean, I feel very grateful with Davison for what I, we did in, in, in the UFC, in the MMA, you know, for our careers, for the history of the sport. But, I mean, of course, uh, I feel happy at the same time, you know, to fight with another guy, you know. I, I, I felt this kind of uh, fresh air when I fought against Kaikar France in Dallas, and this one is the same. I feel very cool. Very nice. Uh, Pantoja was here earlier. He had a lot of respect for you. Uh, but I know he was kind of like right in front of your face saying, let's fight, let's get this going. Did that make it kind of personal for you at all? Nah, nah man. I mean, sorry if I'm not this guy who loves to to talk shit in social media or try to to make some drama. But at the end, that works for me, man. You know, the people love what I'm doing because it's real, it's natural. So I don't have nothing uh, personal against Alexander Pantoja. For sure, this uh, uh, competitive part of myself, knowing he beat me twice in the past, uh, gave me a an, uh, an different flavor, for sure. But at the same time, I'm just thinking about the opportunity, man. The opportunity to, hey, if you beat Alexander Pantoja in the T-Mobile Arena, International Fight Week, man, your legacy, man, your legacy. So I'm just like very focused in, the, in that uh, last goal to, to, to win my next fight, my, first, my second first title defense. <laughs> <laughs> it is interesting, right, the history between you two that he has beaten you twice. I mean, how much does that impact this? Like, is there like a mental thing there when you get in there or something, you know, about the technique? I mean, how much do those two last fights affect this fight? I mean, I think, I don't know how he's managing this new uh, fight against me because I, I've been like watching like, an, like a uh, stalker all uh, his interviews and everything. And I can see it and he say no, but I can feel like he's motivated, like, hey, I know I beat him. I can do it again, you know? He has this air, that, that kind of sensation. I can see it in his face and, and how he, in his body language. For me, it's just that competitive part. Like, man, he, he beat you, but you need to know you are so different. And I don't like to talk too much about, like, oh, I'm a different fighter and whatever, because I don't even need to talk about it. The people can say it. I mean, a lot of fighters say, uh, like, oh, I'm a different fighter. I changed too much. But then you watch the, their fights, and it's kind of the same, you know? But my situation, I always put this example, like, it's very similar, for example, with Charles Oliveira. Like, when he came to the UFC, he was a kind of, uh, you know, a good fighter, winning some fights, losing some fights, then getting some bonuses, then loses again. But then he started to win and win and win. And, win. and everybody was like, what happened with this guy? Why he's just winning? And then he got the title. He lost against Makashev. But then he got this amazing victory against Benil Darius. So I think it's very hard to find examples like that. And I feel I'm that kind of example. You know, I just change. I'm just different, you know? Talking about the technical part, talking about the, the mental part, um, and that's it, man. I just want to show that to the world this Saturday. I don't want to talk too much about it, but man, I'm ready. I'm ready, I'm ready to, to, to shine this, this Saturday. Last thing for me, you know, you had this long chapter with Davis and Figueredo, and then you mentioned this one kind of for your legacy to get the... Are there other fights that you see on the horizon for yourself that you need for your legacy or you want for your legacy? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I mean, man, I'm focusing in, in Pantoja right now. I know I can start to talk and say like, yeah, I want to fight with this, with this, with this. But man, I, I can't disrespect Pantoja right now. And actually, I don't want to say a, a, any name right now. I want to be very focused in Pantoja because he, I know he's motivated. He won my head and he won my belt. And man, this one is mine. I, I, not this one, but <laughs> you understand. Brandon, right here. Uh, you mentioned, you know, this is the first defense of the second reign. Um, what do you want this one to be different compared to your first time, like both mentally and just how you're trying to perceive yourself as a champion? Yes, I mean, I, I was talking uh, about this uh, before. I remember my first title defense in, in Anaheim. 
uh, everything changed, uh, talking about I mean, my media obligations, all the, all the cameras, the interviews. Man, that can be very stressful at the end. I, I remember myself finishing, I don't know, I, I remember uh, Tuesday or Wednesday after all the media. Uh, I, I went to my room, I was like, oh man, I'm so exhausted. I mean, I'm done. But then I remember, like, oh, you, now you need to train and sweat because you need to make way this Friday. Like, oh my goodness. So I just tried to learn from that. Do you, and, yeah. do you feel like, you, in hindsight, maybe you weren't quite ready for that, and now you are? Yeah, I mean, I mean for sure. I mean, the experience. I mean, I know it. And I, I, every single fight, I know what is coming. You know, uh, I uh, uh, I speak English, I speak Spanish, so I know every single interview is both languages, for example. I'm just doing examples. And I change my trainings, for example. Um, and now, I train in the morning, and I, sp I uh, spend all my my energy in, the, in that training. Then I go for the media, and if, sorry, but at, at the end, if I'm tired, like, I mean, if I do a bad interview, <laughs> and um, the last fight, I know the transition between camps, you went to Fortis and <laughs> it, was, it was a little bit chaotic, but now you've had you know, the full proper camp with SAFE and everything. Can you just talk about how that relationship is growing and what it's been like to train there? Man, SAFE and I, we made an, a huge conne connection almost immediately. So last year, 2022, was, uh, I mean, came with a lot of drama. Because I changed my team from Tijuana to Kansas City with James. The people know what happened. Then I needed to find immediately another head coach. A safe came with us, trying to help. And we make that connection immediately. And that works because when we start to, to work together, we had just like four weeks to prepare for Davis and Figueredo in Rio. So, man, we, we did an amazing time in a short period of time. For this new training camp, uh, I went to, to Dallas, I went to Fortis MMA, I, I met all the guys, everybody were uh, very nice with me, and man, the, the training camp was insane, was very hard. But I love that because at the same time, we keep this balance between an, a crazy hard uh, training camp and taking care of my body, you know, uh, getting that recovery you needed at the end of the week. So, man, I, I'm just excited. Man. I'm just ready to fight. I'm, di I, I'm dying right now. I need food. I need, um, I need, you know, some pics or whatever. But just give me that. And after that, just kicking asses sometime uh, this Saturday. <laughs> Brandon, over here. Um, if, if I had told you uh, when you lost to Alexandre the, the first time and the ultimate fighter that you'd be fighting a third time, but for the UFC title, like years later, what would you have said then? Uh, I don't know, maybe yes, because I was, I was very young, you know, he was having an, 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 a good moment. And in my mind, when I lost against him, yes, for example, maybe, I'm trying to remember, maybe the first moment was very hard, like, oh, I don't know, you have these negative thoughts in your mind, like, I don't know if this is for me. I don't know if I want to keep going, blah, blah, blah. You wake up in the morning and you need to go and train. And you're like, I don't know if, I'm not sure if I want to go to train today, you know? But in the moment when I pass all those uh, negative thoughts, uh, I was focused on think, just keep going. Like, I mean, I need to keep going. I need to keep fighting, not just for me. I mean, for my wife, for my daughters, for my teammates, for all the people who believe in me. And I don't know, man. I mean, if you told me that in that moment, like, yeah, like Joe, yes, for sure. Just, just give me, give me a, a new opportunity. Is any part of you jealous about Yair's custom belt that he's been carrying around? Oh, man, I mean, it's beautiful. Actually, the belt is so beautiful. I don't know, I don't know if you had the opportunity yet to, to watch the, the, the belt right here with, because he, he brings the, the belt with him. But it's beautiful. It's very nice. I mean, not jealous, but it's, 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 just, it's just very nice. And then last one for me, Saturday is going to be Robbie Lawler's last fight, uh, and then he's going to retire. I'm curious if you have any favorite memories or favorite fights from his career. Man, of Robbie? I mean, of course, man. That one with Robbie McDonald, it, I mean, if you are a huge uh, UFC fan, you can't forget that one. I mean, uh, he's a warrior, and I'm just uh, happy to share the, the car with him. Thank you. Oh. Um, <laughs> you a few times. What about that fight um, exceptions? Because you guys, you used to be close and now you're not, and it's because you want to go chase greatness. Like, what about that fight exception? Man, 
Sorry, but I'm so focused for uh, focused for uh, for Pantoja, so I don't have like any comments about Henry Cejudo right now. Sorry. Oh man! So let me tell you. So everybody saw that, that embedded with my with my daughter uh, opened the guards this weekend. She actually she opened a, a package with a really value uh, a Japanese card about a uh, Mew in a new collection. Uh, it's Pokemon 151. It's about the first generation of Pokemons. That one is very cool. It's in gold. I, I actually it's funny because I told I told her like, hey, you, we need to take care of this one because maybe I pay the college with this one. So you never know. Brian, I'll right here. Hi, how you doing? Uh, so the first time you guys fought was on the tough. The second time you guys fought was on the prelims. How does it feel that both you guys have elevated your careers to the point now that you're in the co-main event of one of the UFC's premier events? No, man, I'm, I'm happy for him and I'm happy for, for myself, obviously, you know? At the end of the day, I'm fighting for this, you know? Uh, I don't know, in the past I was just happy thinking, in, hey, hopefully one day I'm gonna fight in the International Fight Week. Not even thinking about belts, not even thinking about main events or, you know, main cards. I just, I just wanna fight there. Awesome. But now, I don't know, nothing. I mean, I just, now I'm fighting that, you know? A Pantoja, happy for him for what he's doing. And there's three teams that are guaranteed in like death, taxes, and both of you guys are like second fight. So, um, as far as the fight goes, are you, is there a level of importance of stealing the show, putting on an incredible fight, or is it about beating him and keeping it about, like, is, is uh, pleasing the crowd one of those top priorities as much as? Oh, like, man, man, my mind is, right now is focused just about the winning, man. I just want to win. I don't care nothing more. I, I, man, I'm just so focused, focusing win, man. Oof, just to think about winning right now, I, oh, my, my skin, man. I just want to win. Brandon, over. One question for me. Um, so this is the first time fighting in Las Vegas in three years. How's it going to be back? And how do you feel about the perception you got? Man, I, I'm expecting a lot of Mexican flags around the arena, around the T-Mobile uh, this Saturday. So last, the first time was against Kaikara France, 2019. Uh, that was cool, but it, I think it was the second or third fight of the card. Uh, the last one was at the Apex against Davison with no crowd for the pandemic. Now we came in a different way for sure, and, and I'm expecting fireworks about, uh, from the people. Fernando, por aquí en español, por favor, buenas tardes. Claro. Buenos días. Ya tú tuviste una rivalidad muy grande con Figueredo de cuatro peleas. Sí, señor. Eh, esta es una tercera también, es otra rivalidad dura. ¿Cuán <risa> similar y a la misma vez cuán diferente es esta serie de peleas? Si la comparas con las que tuviste con, con Figueredo, ¿cómo la ves tú similar y diferente? Claro, Frank. mira. Brendan, you've had uh, oh, four fights against uh, Figueiredo, and now you're going into your third fight against Pantoja. How, I mean, again, another series of fights. How do you compare? What are the differences between those, and what are the similarities between those? Tienes que, que, tienes que quitar el cheque. <laughs> <laughs> para que le entiendan, para que todos. Claro que sí. Uh, pues mira, vengo de esta rivalidad muy loca con Davison que duró uh, básicamente dos años. Por ahí esta pausa con Kaikara France en Dallas. Pero, o sea, dos años intercambiando palabras con Davison en redes sociales, las entrevistas, el estrés, el campeonato. Obviamente de que Davison estaba bien duro y que las peleas fueron eh, eh, complicadas. Entonces, no te voy a negar que a pesar de que voy a otra rivalidad, esta pelea me da un aire de frescura. O sea, simplemente el hecho de haber estado en un campamento donde eh, entrené diferente, hice un plan de pelea diferente para, un, para otro peleador específico. O sea, sí te da como que cierto aire de, de, de ligereza, de frescura. A la vez pensando en que sí, o sea, entiendo y tomo muy en cuenta el hecho de que ya es Alexander Pantoja un, un rival que también pues, conozco de cierta manera, ¿no? Um, I've had a rivalry of basically two years of Davis and Figueredo, not just the fights, but also exchanging words on social media. Really, it's a good talk, except for the break against Kagara France. I mean, it was pretty much it all the time. And although this is, uh, there, uh, it is a series now, I do have to say there's a refreshing aspect to this, just training for a new fighter, getting ready for a new challenge. There's something about light about doing that, so it's a pretty cool thing. How do you prepare porque con Figueiredo fuiste creando resultados, pero cuando vas contra alguien que te ha ganado dos veces por, de la manera que haya sido, mentalmente, ¿cómo te preparas? Campeonato mundial a defender tu corona, 
pero es alguien que te ha ganado. ¿Cómo, cómo llegas tú al entrenamiento y cómo llegas a esta semana de la pelea? How do you prepare yourself for training? I mean, you actually have this ups and downs against uh, and the flow ebbs and flows against uh, Figueiredo, but in this case, you're fighting a fighter that actually beat you twice. So, how does it change in that in that sense? What do, what do you how do you go? What's your mindset coming into the camp and what's your mindset coming into the fight? Claro, <laughs> mira. Es obvio que tomo en cuenta ligeramente el hecho de que eh, perdí con él, eh, no lo puedo borrar de mi pasado y, y es un hecho, ¿no? Um, pero partiendo de ahí, lo único que he tratado de hacer para este nuevo combate es eh, aprender de qué hice mal, de qué hice bien y qué hice mal en esos combates, ¿no? Porque a pesar de que pierdo y que sé que cometí muchísimos errores, hay cosas que eh, todavía eh, logré hacer de, de, de buena manera. Entonces, solamente trato de agarrar la experiencia, trato de, de, de agarrar eh, toda la madurez posible, de ver esto como un nuevo reto y no enfocarme tanto en, en, en la derrota, sino ver esto como una forma diferente y nueva de, de seguir formando mi legado, creo que es lo más importante, ¿no? O sea, es lo que comentaba ahorita en inglés, de que, hey, o sea, esta oportunidad es de que, hey, vas a ganarle al tipo que te ganó en el pasado, en International Fight Week, con la arena repleta de posiblemente banderas mexicanas, siento que esta va a ser una oportunidad muy chida. Se me pone la piel de gallina cuando nada más pienso en eso. <risa> Uh, of course, I can't uh, forget the fact that, we, that, that I had lost the fights. You can't delete that from your past. But it, it, you all, how I do look back on those fights, and I see the, the things that I've done well, and I think that I didn't do so well, and that even though there, there are losses out there, um, there are things in there that maybe that we can keep for, for future fights. And again, just like I was telling everyone in English, this opportunity, just, hey, fight this guy who beat you twice, beat him here, beat him for to keep the title, beat him in a full arena, international fight week, possibly full of Mexican flags. I mean, I just try to see it as a new challenge for me. Good chido. Um, uh, just to follow the questions in Spanish, you heard it. Uh, you got Yasmin Jauregui, you got Edgar Chávez, you got Jesús Aguilar, you got uh, Yair Rodríguez, and you have Benar Moreno. What a, what a party full of Mexicans. How do you feel? Mira, antes que nada, pues ya he tenido este, este tipo de momentos en el pasado, ¿no? Eh, cuando compartí cartelera con varios mexicanos en Ciudad de México. Eh, la cartela de Anaheim, eh, por ahí estaba Silvana y por ahí eh, me olvido de, 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 de los demás, pido una disculpa. Michael estuvo, si no me equivoco, eh, a lo mejor no mexicanos, pero compañeros. Eh, y esta vez hablando de, específicamente de México, creo que lo vuelve eh, muy especial. Claro que sí, porque no solamente son personas eh, las cuales comparten bandera conmigo, sino son personas con las cuales he compartido varios momentos a lo largo de mi vida, eh, como lo es con Yasmín, como lo es con, con Chuy Aguilar y sobre todo con Edgar. ¿no? Edgar, que híjole, eh, lo conozco ya desde muchos años atrás, eh, sé lo duro que ha trabajado para esta oportunidad, sé lo que ha batallado, sé las veces que se ha tropezado y los obstáculos que ha tenido que pasar para llegar hasta aquí. Va a ser una pelea pues, complicada para él, es una pelea en corto aviso, con contra un Tatsuro Taira que se ha visto muy bien, eh, de una manera muy técnica en su paso por la UFC, pero híjole, o sea, yo estoy muy confiado en que le va a ir muy bien y hablando ya pues otra vez en general, o sea, Jair peleando por campeonato contra Alexander Volkanovski, yo mismo, Yasmin Chuy, eso se puso muy chido, la verdad es que se puso muy bien, estoy muy contento por ellos y… Me siento también muy honrado de que la UFC nos haya, dado, nos haya dado esta importancia a nosotros los mexicanos en un evento tan importante para ellos como lo es International Fight Week. Um, I've, I've gone through the situation plenty of times actually in Mexico fighting uh, or so many people um, and sharing the card with, uh, um, with Mexicans as well, but also the card in Anaheim. I mean, it was myself there, it was um, uh, Michael Morales, Genaro, Uh, a lot of people, and, and everybody was there. I mean, it was a card that I shared with Mexicans, but this is a, just a different story. I mean, this is International Fight Week. Uh, these are not just uh, competitors to share a flag with me, but many of them, actually, we share different moments in training. Um, I mean, with everybody that's coming up, uh, you see Jair fighting for the title. Um, you have, uh, especially Jair, because someone that I, that's been with me for such a long time, I know what he's all about. I know how hard he's worked for this. I know he's had the opportunity. I know the trials and tribulations, and sometimes he, He stepped along the way, but it's so important to have him here. Um, at the end of the day, having him and uh, yeah, Jauregui and all them, it's so important. To, to, it, it, at the end of the day, this has been a pretty cool thing. Para hace 10 años que se entabló una amistad muy bonita con Diego Rodríguez, que se pusieron en, en 
Jackson Wick que me me ha tocado mi currículo estos 10 años, ver cómo se echan porras, cómo se ayudan, cómo trabajan entre ustedes. Le preguntaba yo hace rato, me dice, es que Brandon no es una inspiración. Me abrió los ojos, me hizo lo que es ver unificando cinturón. Qué chido. Que las cosas eran posibles, pero Brandon me enseñó y me dijo, oye cabrón, ahí está, tú puedes unificar el cinturón. ¿Qué significa que, tú, que compartas este momento con tu gran amigo? Y que tu amigo te dedique esas palabras antes de una noche tan importante como esta. You've known Yair Rodríguez for 10 years, and when asked here before, he said, you know what, is that Brandon Moreno is my inspiration. Somebody that opened my eyes and said, hey, dude, it's here. It's here for the taking. Um, I, 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 we've seen you cheer for him. You see, we've, seen, we've seen him cheer for you. And how does it, how does it feel now to actually be uh, sharing this, this amazing card uh, together with Yair Rodríguez? Híjole, sí, pues a Yair lo conocí. Yo, yo llegué a Albuquerque... Diciembre, diciembre de 2013, uh, y ahí nos conocimos, empezamos a entrenar juntos, después él pues, se va de Ultimate Fighter, yo me regreso a mi casita y luego ya empiezo a pelear eh, eh, en Arizona, pues okay. cada quien tuvo un camino diferente y yo me siento muy contento por él porque cada quien a su manera pues ha logrado sus sueños, ¿no? Y ha logrado sus cosas y todo eso que me comentas y todo eso que Jair dice pues me llena de mucho orgullo y me, me, me honra mucho y me hace pues sentir muy feliz, ¿no? Muy contento y estoy bien agradecido por las cosas que dice y nada, o sea, súper contento porque vamos a compartir cartelera y es que yo sé de lo que es capaz Jair y creo que se ha comentado mucho a lo largo de la semana, ¿no? Que el estilo de Jair y estoy bien de acuerdo, creo que es un estilo bien complicado para quien sea y creo que va a ser un, un estilo bien complicado para Volkanovski por la altura, por lo, lo impredecible, por el alcance, por el pateo. Yo, yo, yo me veo ganando junto con él y tomándonos una foto muy chida al final de, de al final de la noche el sábado. Um, we, we, we go way back to December 3rd, 2013, Albuquerque. Then, you know, life is taking us for ways. I went to Arizona. Everybody knows about Ultimate Fighter, and it was my turn. So I just, it, he, he's a guy who just made things, he, he's, he's making dreams come true. And um, the fact that he said those, those words, it just makes me so happy and also so proud of something like that. And, uh, you know, about him, I know the guy. And I know how hard he can be. I know how his reach, I know his power, I know that style, the style that makes it difficult for a lot of other fighters, especially for uh, Volkanovski. And I really want to have, I uh, can see myself taking a picture on Saturday with him, a picture of us together uh, with belts. Yeah, Brandon, just uh, quick over here. Um, you mentioned being at Fortis MMA. Who did you mainly get to train with over there? Because when you think of that gym, it's a lot of uh, you know, fighters in higher weight classes. We see Marcelo Rojo here. Who else did you get to work with? No, Marcelo is uh, no, not a fight right now. He's going to fight it's coming soon in July 15, so he's in shape. <laughs> he's making weight. But there in, 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 in Dallas, I had uh, two is, is specific training partners. Uh, Nick Piccinini, who is uh, All-American in wrestling. He helped me like a lot. And uh, another one was uh, Ian Eggbrooks. Uh, is this so Eggbrook. I mean, all those guys helped me a lot. Gave me a lot of hard uh, uh, sparring sessions. And man, I feel really prepared. Uh, hopefully, they uh, they uh, will be very cool if they uh, stay here. But they came back to to Dallas. But man, I mean, Nick and, and, and Ian, those guys helped me a lot for this preparation. And just last one for me. Have you been given any indication who will fight the winner of this? Is it going to be Brandon Royval or Amir al -Bazi? What, what do you think sort of will, will be next uh, for the winner of this fight? I mean, I, I think, I mean, uh, Brandon Royval is actually here, you know, for, uh, for a backup, uh, as a backup fighter. So after this fight, yeah, I mean, I don't, I'm not even thinking about the future, but yeah, I mean, Royval is there. Brandon, uh, back here. Uh, you know, obviously a lot's been made of, of the fact that you've lost to him twice now, but you're still a betting favorite, you know. <clears throat> what does that mean to you, you know, that at least the odds makers still think that you're at least a better fighter? Man, in the past when I when I was the, the favorite in, in the in the odds, I lost. So that doesn't mean nothing for me, man. I just, actually, I'm trying to never watch nothing about bets, about odds, who's the favorite, who's the underdog, because for me that doesn't, ma doesn't matter. Uh, actually, I think that's an extra motivation for Pantoja. Like, oh, I'm the underdog, okay. So I'm taking care of that, okay? I'm thinking about it, and I'm just trying to win, man. I don't care nothing more. Perfect. And last question. It's not the exact same situation by any means, but obviously uh, back in, I believe, April, we saw Israel Adesanya, you know, beat someone who had beaten him multiple times. And 
the, the eruption from the athlete itself in the arena was pretty crazy. Do you see that same situation playing out for you if you went on Saturday night? Man, I mean, in the past, uh, Pantoja, obviously, before to, to Alexaria lost against, uh, 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 Alex, uh, lost against Aesania, but Pantoja say, oh, I'm his Poitain, like, maybe, yes, maybe he, he is. We did it, guys, let's go.